Hi, this is Debbie and I'm sharing a video I created for my Doodle with Debbie series for Samsa Stamp. I love texture and in today's video I enjoy playing with Nouveau Expanding Mousse to add texture to a watercolour card. The Follow the Rainbow set I used was from a recent April card kit from Samsa Stamp. As I record this video there are still kits available, however you can buy the stamp set separately. The kit is filled with beautiful, bright, happy rainbow colours, but I am always drawn to a moodier colour scheme. I wanted to create a background to the woman with the umbrella image from the Follow the Rainbow set, which had layers of colour, stamping and texture to represent the weather of a rainy day. With COVID-19, this card could represent the current chaos and the unknown, but is supported by the strong, hopeful sentiment which we all need presently. I place the image in the misty and stamp with antique linen distress ink onto Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Press watercolour card which I'd removed from its gummed block with a palette knife. I used an old cloth to wipe off some of the ink before stamping to ensure a light application which would blend and fade out with the paint. I used Daniel Smith paints and here's my tip for mixing a nice grey. I have my palette set off to the side here and I used Burnt Sienna mixed with Ultramarine Blue. You can vary the mix from more brown for a warmer grey or more blue for a cooler one. I started with a dilute mix of the grey and painted in one of the umbrella sections. I then brought in deeper colours into the section. My aim with each section is to leave a lighter edge where the metal frame supporting the umbrella structure pushes the fabric up to a point and catches the light. I didn't overthink the shading of the umbrella past that, just aim for areas of light and shade, but those light sections being on the spokes which fan out from the umbrella centre. I painted each section separately to help define the edges. If I'd painted one section next to another, then the paint would have spread and bled between the two areas. I carried on round the umbrella until I had painted each section with a first layer of colour. Moving on to the dress, I was undecided on what colour to paint the dress. I wanted some depth of colour but didn't want it to look too much like Christopher's Lady in Red. So I went to a more subtle, deep, pinky peach colour. Often I get asked what colour mixes I use. Sometimes I can tell you as I did for the grey on the umbrella where I mixed a specific colour. However, often I'm just picking up colour from my well-used palette and using that. It saves on paint too, which is also a bonus, but often means I don't know exactly which colours went into creating the mix. At this point, I'm concentrating on getting a base layer of colour down before slowly building up the layers and shadows, adding those deeper colours to define the areas and add interest. However, before I go too far, I want to get the background started. This card was very much a play session for me of something I had in my mind and wanted to get out and I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. For the background I washed the area with clean clear water and a larger brush and then brought in some of the same colours I've been working with up to this point, greys and pinky peaches. I wanted the colours in the background to reflect those of the woman. Adding paint into an already wet area is called wet in wet and is my favourite way to play with watercolours. I love the way the colours blend and bleed together and by tilting the board, adding in droplets of clear water, you can affect the way the paint behaves and create lovely dribbles, blooms and interest. I must admit when I started painting the background I wasn't keen and then once I dried it with a heat tool I love the watercolour effect. For most of the background I used vertical lines to represent the rain coming down. However I did create a horizontal area around her feet for the ground and I kept this area directly around her feet light in colour so that she had a slight glow around her with deeper colours further out. At this point I wanted the woman to pop off the page more. She was a bit wishy-washy in colour and tone and blended in with the background too much and so I went back in with deeper darker tones. My method of doing this is the wet on dry technique, adding paint directly to the dry surface. I then take a damp brush and spread out the colour to create softer lines. You may have noticed I still haven't painted the belt area up to now. I'm so much more comfortable with flowers than I am clothing. I really have very little fashion sense and did agonise over what colour to paint the belt. White? Black? 
in the end I went with colour but with a more pinky tone to it than the rest of the dress. At this point I wanted to work on the background more. I took the watercolour piece off the board and popped it back into the misty. I kept it in place with a couple of pieces of washi tape and that's because I'm using a large background stamp and didn't want the magnet to get in the way. The stamp I'm using is the Goodreads background from Simsa Stamp and I wanted to give some subtle areas of text to the area around the woman. To protect her from the ink, I stamped the image on a piece of masking paper and cut around that before putting it in place. I then inked the background in pumice stone distress ink and again used an old cloth to wipe away some of the ink to create a softer impression. I ended up inking up the background twice so that the text of the stamp showed up on the textured watercolour card. Next is the added texture I wanted to include on this piece. I'm using Nouveau Expanding Mousse in the worn linen colourway and a palette knife and spreading the mousse over the background. This overlays and softens the stamp text. I aim to spread the mousse in thin layers in some areas but thicker patches too. These thicker patches are the ones that will react the most to the heat tool. You can either heat up the mousse straight away as I did here or let the mousse dry and then heat it, and the two methods give different results. I'm impatient, so went with the heating straight away, and love how the thicker areas of mousse bubble up under the heat to create texture. I've placed the piece back on a board and taped it down again, as I'm going to bring in more watercolour. All these different layers of watercolour, text, expanding mousse, and now more watercolour, will create a really interesting background to the focal point. Once I'd added more watercolour over the mousse, I covered the woman with the masking paper again and liberally, liberally splattered with white gouache and also leftover paint. I then removed the mask and splattered with a solution of Perfect Pearls for some sparkle. I finished off the watercolouring by deepening the ground level and then took the watercoloured piece off the board before working on deepening the shadows further with coloured pencils. I made sure the pencils were super sharp before working on those nooks and crannies. The depth of colour in some areas then contrasts nicely with the lighter areas in others. This piece started as 5 or 7 inches. I cut and scored a piece of ivory card from Subset Stamp to be 5 by 7 inches and then trimmed the watercolour piece to be slightly smaller before adding foam adhesive to the back and adhering to the card base. For the sentiment, I was really drawn to the don't lose hope, brighter days are coming. It was such an uplifting greeting in these uncertain times that I wanted to include it on this card. I stamped the sentiment in clear embossing ink on black card I treated with antistatic powder and then sprinkled with white embossing powder before heat setting. I trimmed around the greeting with a scalpel and metal edge ruler before using a T-square ruler to foam mount the sentiment in place. To add more texture and interest to the background, I added glossy eggshell pearls from Little Things from Lucy's Cards, kept in place with Gina K Connect glue. I also added bubblegum blush and rose water nouveau droplets to finish. Here's the completed card of my play session with watercolour and texture to create a multimedia background. Hopefully you can see all the texture and detail if I lift up the card a bit closer to the camera. I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products I've used today as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at limedoodadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks and I'll see you next time.